Good evening from the Swan and Dolphin Resort. We were invited out tonight to experience the Food and Wine Classic, which is a food festival that takes place between the swan and the dolphin once a year for one weekend. And I don't know, I'm excited. I'm excited to taste all the different food and see what's going on. You got, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but there's a band down there. There's another band over here. It's gonna be a lot of entertainment, a lot of things happening. So let's go check it out. So the pricing for this event is pretty interesting. For $145, you can get one of these bracelets here and that will give you unlimited tasting at any of the booths. Or for $65, you can get a booklet that has 25 tickets in it and that will get you samples, but the samples can range from two to six tickets. Our first booth that we're gonna stop off is Il Molino and this is actually the restaurant that is inside of the swan. Our first item is organic kombucha, squash ravioli, pumpkin seed and sage gremolata, pumpkin crema, and pecorino cheese. All right, let's give it a try. Oh, that's delightful. It almost tastes like um, tomato sauce, but without any tomatoes in it, because it was all pumpkin. The seeds are kind of overwhelming. There was a lot of seeds on top, kind of like a granola sitting on top. And it was also cold, which is strange because it was warm. I like watched him plate it over there. And then we walked maybe like 15 feet and now it's cold, but still kind of good. I do wish there was less seeds on top, but the, the pumpkin on the inside, because it has the cheese, very, very creamy. Like this is a very nice and easy to eat dish. I would eat it again. So this whole event is kind of based around food and wine as it is the food and wine festival. So there are wine booths and there are food booths. So like right here in front of us, you see that there's something that says Chile and California. Those are both wine booths. And then right next to it is a food booth. Time to head up to the dessert section. I know I've only tried one thing, but desserts are next. I'm gonna start out with this molten chocolate bananas foster bourbon vanilla whipped ganache. Ooh, yeah. This looks good. I think I'm also gonna get the berry pavlova. Got some cream cheese gelato and vanilla, cream cheese fluff meringue, red berry compote, and a black currant sauce pipette. All right, don't mind this kind of red lighting, but we're gonna go into this bananas foster explosion cake. Oh yeah, that looks real nice on the inside. Somebody that was serving it said that it was life, so we'll see. Okay, at first, I tasted a lot of banana and I was like, oh no, I don't know if I'm gonna like this. And then I got kind of like an explosion of chocolate in my mouth and it really kind of like accented how good banana and chocolate go together. That was delicious. Wow. Like a really nice rich chocolate to counteract the banana in there. Ah. And then they have like a little bit of like, is this a banana sauce or is this an apple sauce? It was like a, Those are bananas. That's the like, I thought they looked like apples, but they weren't, they're bananas. Really good. Yeah, I like this a lot. All right, we're gonna try the pavlova here. I have to squeeze my pipette into it. Ooh, okay, well it just sprayed all over me. All right, good times. Well, I, I needed to take this shirt to the dry cleaner, I guess. This is actually pretty fun once it's not exploding all over me. All right. Ooh, I like that, like a meringue on the outside? Okay, let's see what it tastes like. Mmm. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. So, you get a little bit of a strawberry flavor at first, and then that kind of gets cut down by the gelato, which is like an ice cream flavor, and then uh, the meringue kind of gets brought up. It's like a little journey inside your mouth. This is really fun. I like this a lot. So far, we've had three different things one entree, two desserts. I like the desserts the best out of them, but so far we haven't had a bad item here. It's gonna be a good night. I will say this, this event is very crowded, so be prepared to deal with the crowd. Over in the Dolphin, whoa, look at this, that's happening over there, like a light show on the building. They have a steakhouse called Shula's, and Shula's has a booth out here. We're gonna have roasted Angus beef tenderloin, Idaho mashed potatoes, caramelized mushrooms with sauce bordelaise. Well, that certainly is not a lot of food or nearly as much as I thought it was gonna be. It's basically just like one slice of beef. Hopefully it's good. Ooh, I feel like I'm probably gonna make a mess here. I'm gonna get down real low with it. Whoa. That is very delicious. Wow. 
Although, I feel like this might not be the best situation to try a piece of steak because it's not as warm as it would be inside the restaurant. Still very, very delicious. Nice and smoky. The mushrooms really bring out a nice flavor. And the mashed potatoes are very, very smooth. Almost like a extreme puree of mashed potatoes. All right, we are headed into Carnival Corner, which seems like it's right up my alley. They have some games out here where they give you a Nerf gun and you have to knock down a golf ball. I don't know what you win, but you do win something. You know we love a nice tent that just says grilled sausage. This is a grilled sausage sandwich with peppers, onions, and red hots. Ooh, you can add extra spiciness to it too. That looks so good. Oh, some people are winning the games back behind me. I love a nice, like, charred sausage. I don't know, it doesn't say what kind of sausage it was. Is it a bratwurst or is it a Italian sausage? We'll have to find out. All right, let's give this sausage a try here. Oh. Oh, that's good. Hmm. It tastes like an Italian sausage. It's good. I like it. It's very, got like a very fennel taste. You know how sausages have fennel in them? This has a lot of fennel taste to it. And then it's got some nice grilled onions and grilled peppers. Delicious. And then the bun, it's not like a regular sausage bun. I don't know how to explain it. It's like a hollowed out roll. So like if they took a, a, a regular hot dog bun and instead of slicing it in half, they like hollowed out a section of it so that it could fit the sausage in it. And it's very good. It's kind of like a little bit of a sweeter bun, almost like a, a Hawaiian roll, but not quite as sweet as a Hawaiian roll. I like it. Up next, we've got chicken chips. Lightly fried chicken served with our homemade ranch. They look really good too. Like nice and thin and super crispy. Some salt on there. I'm kind of excited to try these. I love a good fried chicken. Oh wow, holy cow, that ranch is so good. And the fried chicken is not like life-changing fried chicken. It's good because it's so thin, it's kind of a little bit overdone, but that ranch is so delicious. Almost tastes like a mix between mayonnaise and ranch, like ranch -ays. I love that, wow. I can, I, I want to find out if I can just buy some of that ranch. Now it's time for Mac Attack. House smoked Angus brisket, smoky chipotle cheese sauce, and fasuli pasta. So far this whole section of this event has been my favorite because most everything has been easy to pronounce. This does not look as good as it sounded though, but we will see how it is. Oh, well, that's way better than it looks still has kind of like a little bit of, you know how when you get mac and cheese and it has like that grainy cheese flavor? I don't know why, but this has it in it. Even though I know that it wasn't really like a, like a box cheese. It's very strange. I'm also not like the biggest fan of mac and cheese. So it takes a lot for me to be like, oh, I love mac and cheese. This one has a kind of a weird aftertaste. When I first bit into it, the brisket was real good. And then I got the rest, like let it sit in my mouth. Not exactly my favorite thing. So, I don't know, I'm gonna say this one's a pass. We've got a fried Oreo with funfetti batter in a dark chocolate ganache. That looks real good. I got a bite that is covered in chocolate. Oh, wow. That was real good. Wow, I forgot how good fried Oreos are. Yeah, like, I don't even know how to describe that. Just imagine an Oreo fried. That's what it tastes like. Nice and crispy on the outside. Dark chocolate ganache, super rich. I wanna eat like six of these. That's so good. Wow. Now we're heading towards the music in Chinatown. Sounds like there's a live band somewhere over here. I like how they have all their paper lanterns everywhere. And it looks like they're playing a Bruce Lee movie over here. Now we're headed into Chinatown. Ooh, yeah, we gotta get some dumplings and roasted pork dumpling in spicy sauce. Oh, but you don't have to put the spicy sauce on it. There's just a bowl of it over here. 
Very nice. Should we do it? Should we get the spicy sauce on it? Yeah. They also have a crispy duck in steamed bao bun with cucumber hoisin. We found a nice spot out by the pool to try some of our next food items. There's the dumpling. And then we've got the little duck bao bun in here. And we're listening to some Chicago. Oh man, this is gonna make a mess, isn't it? All right, let's bend down a little bit, give it a try. I put so much spicy sauce on it. That's a spicy sauce. Wow, but it is very good. Like the spicy sauce has, it's almost like it's a, like a sesame oil spicy sauce. And then it's got some pork inside of it. Basically a, a like a simple pork dumpling, but that spicy sauce, like sesame spicy sauce, really adds to it. They had another bottle up there that was like hot. And so I'm kind of wondering what the hot tasted like now. Cause this is pretty spicy. Kind of grooving to this Chicago that's happening while I'm eating a, like a crispy chicken bun here. Let's give it a try. Not really my favorite. The duck doesn't really have any flavor. Did I say that it was chicken? Not chicken, it's duck. This one isn't my favorite. The duck has like zero flavor at all to it. Of course, I did just eat a super spicy dumpling, so maybe my taste buds are gone. A new booth this year is called Hang 10, and it's actually out here on the beach where we were watching the band a few minutes ago, but I'm not gonna get anything from there because it's all fried fish. Oh, I found the place that we liked last year called the Pig in the Poke. This traditional earth-baked Kahlua pork, steamed white rice, and barrel-aged tamari Napa cabbage. Here it is, right here. Here's the pig. Ooh, that looks real good. That's a good looking pork dish. I think I'll like this one. So where I was standing, I couldn't review the pork because it was very loud, but it was pretty delicious. I think that I may have had like a misconception or like a bad memory of what it was last year because it was much better in my mind than it actually was. Does that make any sense? I think that um, it wasn't my favorite dish tonight. It was very sweet like Kahlua pork is, but I don't know. I think I liked a few things better. That pork dumpling was good. The ranch with chicken was really good. That sausage was really good. The ravioli was good and those two desserts delicious. Now we're headed into the champagne area and I think they had little finger sandwiches and stuff in here. So let's go inside and have a look. The champagne room bubbles everywhere. You guys know that I love bubbles. My least favorite thing. Not seeing any food, but there is a band up here playing some nice swing music. Before I put another notch in my Lucy case, you better make sure you So it seems like the event is slowing down a little bit. Let's get to this smoking D's barbecue. Barrel aged Carolina barbecue sauce, butter beans, and pickled watermelon rinds. What is korobuta? It's a kind of pork. It's a kind of pork? Okay. This looks good. This is probably one of the most interesting looking barbecue dishes I've ever seen. It's got lima beans on it. I put some Western Carolina barbecue sauce on it. I have no idea what these crispy things are. I'm really interested to try this. I got one of the crispy things and I got some of the pork. Huh. That's pretty good, actually. It is kind of like a almost tastes a little bit gamey. Like, you know how when you get a gamey meat, it's like kind of like grainy? It's almost what this tastes like. I'm interested to see, I'm gonna try to get some without the sauce on it. This is hard to do, I'm not left-handed. Yeah, that's interesting. It almost tastes like a mix between ground beef and pulled pork. Wow. And I still don't know what the crispy things are. There's also pickled watermelon rind in here, which I don't... That's a weird flavor. Did not expect that one at all. Huh. It's, it's kind of an interesting take on barbecue. Kind of like an elevated barbecue. 
kind of like it. All right, now we are headed down towards the stage where there's another band. Whoa, look at this. It's a very flashy evening. Trying to find some more food. Over here at a place called The Fountain, they've got the crispy Southern style fried chicken with orange blossom honey, hot sauce, and sour pickle chips. Oh yeah, this looks exciting. We are definitely heading into the area that is more intensely lit with flashing lights, louder music, and more people, less tables. So this might get harder. I've actually got a pickle on top of it, some hot sauce, and some uh, potatoes. Everything all mixed into one bite. Wow. Mm, that's real good. It's a little bit um, dry, but flavor is spot on for fried chicken. With that hot sauce, kind of tastes like a buffalo hot sauce. So the potato is basically non-existent, uh, but I don't know. It, everything has a really good flavor to it. One last savory item. We're gonna get the Arkansas BLT. This is Arkansas green tomato, thick cut double smoked bacon, iceberg lettuce, and mayonnaise. Ooh, that is a good looking BLT. I cannot wait. I have a feeling this will be my favorite thing of the night. Let's give it a try. That's awesome. It is just a BLT, but it is extra smoky because they double smoked the bacon and it is extremely thick. So imagine like a regular sandwich with regular lunch meat and then turn that lunch meat into bacon. Like that's how thick it is. Man, this is good. This is real good. Hmm. Like a smoky BLT. Yeah, this is awesome. I would eat this every day of my life. So good. One last stop for some dessert. These two were so delicious. Also, they are the only desserts available at this event, but they're very good. Well, this has been an extremely fun night with a lot, a lot of food. And I think there was a pretty good selection of food. One thing that I will say is that I don't know that the price of the wristband is worth it if you are not a drinker. Like myself, you get one of these cups when you come in and you get the band, but I haven't put any wine or anything in it. But if you are a drinker, you can get unlimited wine, unlimited beer, unlimited food. You can work your way through all the booths for one price and try a lot of different things. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that that's a good deal for the amount of variety and the amount of different wines and beers that you could try here? Or do you think that's still too high? Keep in mind, this is still like within the Disney bubble. So you're still on Disney prices. So before we leave, I wanted to share some of the numbers from the event with you guys that they provided us with. And they, tell, they told us that there are 6,400 pieces of sushi made for this event. There are 3,000 handmade pork dumplings made for this event. 700 pounds of Kahlua pork, 625 pounds of mac and cheese, 125 Peking ducks, and 800 pounds of pork shoulder. That's a lot. And you could tell by the amount of people that were out here today, it is a huge event. Also, it's only Friday and Saturday of this week. So make sure that you guys are planning it out. If you guys are going to be here around this time next year, definitely look for the Food and Wine Classic. So all in all, a fun night. Thank you again to the Swan and Dolphin for having us out. We got to try a lot of really good food tonight. It was a lot of fun atmosphere, a lot of fun bands singing songs, stuff like that. I really enjoyed myself. I'm excited to come back next year and try more food because I think that this is one of the higher end food festivals in the area. Like you will find a more elevated food here than you would find at maybe the food and wine festival at Epcot. This stuff, a little bit different level, but it is a little bit pricey. So all in all, still a fun night. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.